This is a key signature. This is a key signature. This is a key signature. And these are all of the key signatures. The key signature tells us two things. What key is the piece of music in and what notes are flat or sharp within that key. Here's a song called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star performed in the key of C major and then in the key of B flat major. See if you can hear the difference. So the first version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that I sang is in the key of C, and that just means it uses something called the C major scale. Now the C major scale is just the note C to C with all of what we call the white keys or the natural notes in between. So it sounds like this. I can then use these notes to create a melody in the key of C. The major scale sounds the way it does because of something called half steps and whole steps. A half step is the distance between a note and its next closest neighbor. And if you keep going up in half steps, you get something called a chromatic scale. And a whole step is the distance between two half steps. So if I take C and go up a half step and go up another half step, we get the note D. And so C to D is a whole step. Whole steps and half steps are what we call intervals. And if we wanted to create a major scale, then all that we have to do is start on any note and then use the following intervals. Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. Or if we're talking about the distance between notes, it would be start on any note and then go two notes away, then two notes away, then one note away, then two, 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 and one. And if you do that, you can make a major scale on any pitch. And that's what gives the major scale its characteristic sound. But let's say that I wanted to play it in the key of B flat. Well, I gotta first find the note B flat, which is right over here. And then all I gotta do is apply this exact same order of intervals. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So we start on B flat, because it's the B flat major scale. Then we go whole step, which is our C. Then we do another whole step, or two notes away, which is D. And then a half step, just to the next note, which is B flat, right here. And then we do a whole, uh, whole step. So it's gonna be F, another whole step, which is gonna be G right here. Another whole step. Okay. And one last half step. Whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. And we have our B-flat major scale. We have officially changed keys. Right, Cal? So we are almost ready to talk about key signatures, but before we do, there's a couple of sheet music things that I want to make sure that you know first. So let's take a look at some scores. Before we begin, you need to be able to identify the following symbols. This is a staff. It's where the notes and rests go. This is a treble clef, which tells you that you are using treble clef notes. This is a bass clef, which tells you that you are using bass clef notes. There's also alto clef too for all the string teachers and viola players watching. These are notes, specifically a quarter note, a half note, and a whole note. These are accidentals. This is a sharp sign, which makes a note one pitch higher. This is a flat sign, which makes a note one pitch lower. And this is a natural sign, which can change a flat or sharp note to its normal version. And finally, the name of a note depends on where you put it and what staff you use. So I teach a high school intro band class, and every year I give the kids this one piece called Midnight Sky by Brian Balmages. Now this piece is in B flat major, which looks like this. However, some of the kids, depending on what instruments they're playing, might actually see this key signature. Or this one. Or this one. And that's because some instruments in the band, like trumpet or alto saxophone, are transposing instruments. Which essentially means that these performers are reading sheet music, they're making music, but the notes that are coming out of their instruments are not actually the same notes that are on the page. Why is this? That's a topic for another video. Okay, but what does this mean for a beginning musician? Let's go back to the lab. The trumpet, clarinet, and tenor saxophone see this key signature. There's nothing there, and when the key signature is empty like this, you know you are in the key of C major. 
This means that if a note is on the staff, you can tell that it's in its normal version. Not sharp, not flat, but natural. This is a C, this is a G, this is an A, etc. No sharps, no flats, all naturals. Alto saxophones, on the other hand, see this. This is the key of G major, and as you can see, it has one sharp in it. The sharp is on the top line, which on the treble clef staff is F sharp. What this tells us is now, whenever there is a note on the line F normally goes, we're going to be interpreting that note as F sharp, even if there are no sharp signs right next to the note. By the way, this space is F as well, just an octave lower. And because of the key signature, we would also interpret any note placed here as F sharp as well. French horns see this key signature, the key of F major, which has one flat on the note B. Using the same logic as before, any note placed where B normally goes will be interpreted as B flat. And finally, the rest of the instruments, including flutes, percussions, oboe, bassoon, tuba, euphonium, trombone, and string instruments are going to be reading in this key, the key of B flat major. It might look like this, or this, or this, depending on which clef the instrument is playing in. But the most important thing to remember is that the flats are always going to be on B flat and then E flat. Here's the sheet music for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in the key of B flat. Now imagine you are new at music and you don't know what a key signature is, so you just see these notes and think that they are in their natural form, like this. Now if I were to play it like this, it would sound terrible. However, now, with our new understanding of music, we know that these notes and these notes are not B and not E, they are B flat and E flat, which changes how we perform the music. And lastly for this video, we're going to be doing a quick crash course on some topics related to key signatures that might be a little bit hard to understand at first if you're a beginner, but this is a great jumping off point for you to learn more. For example, remember this symbol, the natural sign? It's now very useful because if I was in the key of B flat major, but for whatever reason I wanted to write in the note E natural for the melody, we'll be able to do that now using the natural symbol. And to illustrate this point, here is a variation of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that I wrote that uses the note E natural in it. Okay, remember our C major scale. However, the scale actually has a secret evil twin called the A natural minor scale. And this scale uses the exact same notes as the C major scale, but instead of starting and ending on C, this one starts and ends on the notes A. And it sounds like this. We would call the A natural minor scale the relative minor scale to C major. So then how can we tell if we're in the key of C major or A minor? Well, usually there's context clues, and the easiest one to identify it is if the song sounds just a little more on the gloomy and darker side. It's usually in a minor key. So because the key of C major and A minor contain the same pitches, this key signature is both the key of C major, but also the key of A minor as well. The key of F major has one flat, and it will be B flat every single time. If you are in the key of B flat major, it will have two flats, B flat and then E flat. E flat major has three flats on B flat, E flat, and A flat. And this keeps going. You keep adding flat notes one by one to what came before it, and eventually you hit the key C flat major, which has all seven notes flattened by the key signature. Since these flats appear in the same order every single time, it's helpful to memorize something called the order of flats. B, E, D, G, C, F. I memorize this as bead, gum, candy, fruit. The order of sharps, luckily enough, is the exact same as the order of flats, but backwards. So, just memorize bead, gum, candy, fruit, and switch it in reverse, and you got your order of sharps. 
This is a diagram of something called the circle of fifths, and musicians use this image to memorize and conceptualize all of the key signatures in one place. A fifth is the distance between five notes. So let's take the five notes C, D, E, F, G. Well, the distance between C and G spans five notes, which makes this a fifth. As the diagram moves clockwise once, you add one sharp or remove one flat. Each step clockwise is also a fifth up from the previous key, hence the name, the circle of fifths. 